Hey guys, welcome back. And what I want to do today is talk a little bit about your left hand. We've talked a little bit about the right hand, and so I'm going to focus in on this hand for a couple little series here. So basically, when we put our hand on the instrument, one of the things that I see is a very common error and common mistake, if you will, is uh, if you'll notice how my hand is and through my arm here, is when I go to play something like a C chord, what will happen a lot of times with beginners in particular is you'll see them do this. The elbow swings out, the shoulder gets like this, putting tension here instead of relaxation. So you don't want, or even if I come here, the arm should not swing out. The elbow should not move around so much like this. It's not, uh, you're not flapping your wings here, so to speak. So the arm, it moves like this, and the elbow, this is the visual I want you to keep in mind, and I think it's gonna help you out and help you break this habit. Imagine that your elbow is very heavy, actually. And um, imagine that it had a weight tied to it. And what you're gonna want is you want a sinking feeling, like the arm sinks, it's heavy here. So relax it, and then it just drops in and out like this. And even if I play something, you know, my elbow, you'll see that my elbow doesn't do this. Like even if I do like a really long stretch here or something, like anything I do, you don't see my elbow kick out a whole lot like that. So one common error that a lot of times people make is that they feel like they can't reach something and they do this. Now, another reason that you don't want this is the moment that you do this, it also affects the positioning of the fingers. It affects where your hand is. And sometimes what can happen is you can get too sideways with your fingers. And what that's going to do is let's say you're playing this note, you get too sideways, and now your first string is kind of dead here, so to speak. So by changing the position of the elbow, you actually can interfere with your fingers and your hands as well. So keep this very relaxed, keep it heavy, make it feel like it has a weight. And in fact, I was reading the other day, a very famous classical guitar player, he said that his dad actually attached a small weight to his arm here uh, to make him kind of feel, feel it right, which I've always known about this kind of idea and visualization here to keep this arm feeling light and heavy here, just at the same time as by light, I mean able to move around, but also a sinking heavy feeling because that enables you to move faster, okay? It's nice and relaxed. Um, but yeah, just watch out for turning the wrist like this and the arm like that. So that's one thing I wanna talk about. I'm gonna to get to the other one in just a minute. Okay, so what I wanna do here is just show you the angle from here because I want you to be in tune with my thumb position here and talk about that a little bit. So focus on that. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is if I'm starting on my C chord up here, what we don't want is we don't want the thumb hugging over like the top of this, okay? Um, number one, if you're here and you have to shift down here, what's the problem? Well, the problem is you're gonna run into the fifth string with your thumb and it's gotta move and then it's gotta, or let's say you're down here and you gotta go back up, well, it's gotta move. And so that is excess motion that we don't want. So what I wanna try to do is try to keep that thumb in the middle of the neck as much as possible. Now, mine, even mine, wanders up a little bit. Just make sure it's not like this and make sure that you can easily surpass the, or pass the fifth string there, okay? Now, I'm just gonna play a little something and I'm gonna move up and down the neck. And you'll notice as I get really high up, the, the thumb, gets kind of close to this little stop here. You know, if I, uh... and a lot of times my thumb, sometimes as I go up the neck, it's going to move further down. And also like if I make some sort of crazy long stretch, let's just make something here. You'll see that my thumb is now much further over. Or I can do it here maybe. Uh... Yeah, some really long stretch. My thumb can't be up here anymore. So by having the thumb in the back of the neck, it actually is going to um, loosen up your hand and give it, provide it with more flexibility, especially for those of you that have short fingers. Having the thumb back there is really gonna help you have a tremendous amount of reach here. And the other thing too, is I always tell people that the banjo is not like a baseball bat. You're not trying to grip it. You're not trying to squeeze it. In fact, I demonstrate this where I play I do this with the kids at school when I teach them, that I play without the thumb on there. So the function of the thumb is not to squeeze the neck. 
It's just a brace there. And the more you squeeze, the more you're going to have to relax in order to move. So you really want this thumb to just be really light. And remember what I said about the elbow. The elbow is just heavy here. So if I'm moving up and down, my thumb should be very nice and relaxed. It should not be squeezing because if I squeeze and then I try to move, it's tense, okay? And it's going to slow me down. So the other thing too, and you can't see this very well from here, I'm going to try my best here, but let's just say I was making a bar chord. Um, a lot of times what happens is people make bar chords and their thumb, this thumb, gets way over here. And my finger is here and my thumb is way over here. What we want is for the thumb and the pointer finger to line up. So if I'm making a bar, the thumb and the line and the and the finger are together, anywhere on the neck. Now, it can get off a little bit, but we don't want this. Um, and sometimes students will really get off you know, with their thumb. They'll get way up here or something. So those are the things that you wanna watch. Now, this hasn't gotten into the wrist angle, and maybe I'll get into that more later on. But of course, you don't want really drastic wrist angles um, in your playing as well. So the things to get out of this lesson, number one, is to make sure the elbow has a heavy feeling in it, that it is not jumping up like this, no twisting up like this. Keep it sliding and into the body like this, in and out. And then also the thumb, just keep him, no matter what you're doing, try your best to keep him in the middle of the neck. He can creep over sometimes, you know, especially if you're fretting the fifth string, of course you're gonna have to do that. But, you know, don't have the thumb doing this kind of business because if it is, then you're gonna be really tight in your hand and then also as you move up, you're gonna run into the fifth string and then you can't get back. So super important to have a very nice and relaxed thumb that's not gripping everything, okay? So hopefully that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions, but that is all for today. Take care.